Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So in the last two, three sessions with respect to singleton pattern, what we have seen that how to achieve singleton pattern. And uh, we have uh, seen one practical example also with Selenium WebDriver. And here, how to achieve that, we have already seen that we have to create one private constructor. And then we have to write the double null check logic also where we have to create one synchronized block. And if the browser equal to be equal to null, then only we are creating a new browser object or creating the singleton class object here. It means only one object is allowed. But there could be some corner cases or edge cases that uh, interviewer can ask. It's a very famous interview question. If any kind of reflection attack or reflection through reflection API, you are trying to create the object of this browser class, can we do that? Yes. Then in that case, uh, your singleton pattern logic will fail here. See, I'll show you. Then how to prevent that? That also I'll show you. So reflection APIs, which are already there in Java, through which also you can access the class in the class properties and the class constructor. And then uh, you can call this particular private class constructor also, which will help me to create the object using a reflection. But Singleton says that you cannot create the object uh, once it is created, right? So what I'll do, this is the, let's see, the Singleton class that I have written. Now I'm going to create a reflection using a reflection API and try to create an extra object here, right? If two objects are created, then the logic is not working. The reflect, uh, the singleton is failed actually, right? So this is a target. So I'll start like this, that first of all, that I'm going to use this particular browser. And then I'm going to use this get instance method that we have already created, which is actually giving me the instance of object of this particular browser class. And then I'm going to store it a one a reference variable here. So I'm just going to store it in, let's see, uh, instance one is equal to this. And the likewise that I'm going to create one more instance reference variable is equal to null. Right now it is equal to null because I cannot create the object of browser class because of my uh, private constructor, right? So directly I cannot do it. See, if I directly write something like this new browser, I'm not able to create the object. So, so far my singleton is absolutely working fine, but I'll try to hack it with the reflection API. <clears throat> so with the reflection API, I'll do one thing. I'll try to get its private constructor information that I can do. It doesn't matter if it is public or private. And then I'm going to use dot get declared constructor method that I can use it here. And this is actually asking me to handle one exception. So let's surround with one try catch block here, something like this. And uh, here I'm going to store it in whatever it's returning it. So it's returning me one declared constructor. So I'm writing, let's see one constructor uh, variable that I'm going to create here. And then this constructor with this particular constructor variable, first we have to do what we have to set accessible, which is equal to true. It means I really want to make this particular private constructor accessible. So we have to call this method that for this constructor, I want to make it accessible to actually so that I can access that particular constructor. And then after that, with the help of this particular constructor, I'm going to use one more method that is new instance method that I'm going to use it here. And then I'm trying to create the object with that. So new instance method is again saying surround with another catch clause. So let's add any catch block here. One more catch block here, instantiation exception in case of any object creation error or any kind of exception is coming while creating the object. And then this new instance is actually giving me what? It's actually giving me the, the object of the browser class. And then I'm going to store it inside the browser reference that I have already created here. Instance number two, I'm going to attach it here. I'm going to refer it with the instance number two. So now I can see I have two instances available. One is instance number one that we have created here by calling this get instance method. Second is instance number two through the reflection API that we have used it here, right? And now I'm going to print what? Now I'm going to print the hash code of instance number one and instance number two one by one. If the hash code is uh, same, it means there is no violation of the singleton. It means singleton is working fine. And uh, if the hash code is uh, different for both the instances, then in that case, I have created actually two object, it means my 
uh, singleton is actually uh, not working or singleton is hacked. So I'll do one thing. This is my instance number one dot simple printing the hash code here. And uh, same thing for this guy also. For instance number two also I'm printing instance number two hash code here. So right. So this is what just I'm just printing it on the console. And then let's see if the hash codes are different. It means singleton is broken now. So now you see that yes for hash code is different. Not exactly same. If it is same then it means yes the singleton is working fine only one object got created because every object or every instance of that particular object of that particular class is having a separate hash code here so you see that okay in the memory two objects got created with two hash code memory here so this is actually not working so this is called the reflection attack on your singleton it means now with this anyone can create the object n number of objects of your singleton class which is a violation of the singleton class. So this is a very famous interview question. Remember that. So how to prevent it? So in order to prevent it, what we can do here is that we can just inside the private constructor, we can just add one simple condition here that if instance is not equal to null, remember that it is a corner case that we have to use it here. In our case, instance is actually browser here. If it's not equal to null, then we have to throw one, let's see, illegal state exception or illegal access argument exception we can uh, supply it here so let's say i'm simple writing illegal argument exception and then here i'm just passing one message or any runtime exception we can throw it here so uh, i'm writing that object is object already exist something like this and then done right so if browser is not equal to null then in that case, simple throw it. So what will happen through the reflection also if you try to access that, try to create the new instance, it will call the private constructor. It will check that, okay, browser is not equal to null. The first instance is not equal to null. Then in that case, a simple object already exists method should come. So let's run it again and let's see. So if I'm running it again, now you see that it's giving me the invocation target exception. And uh, here it says that object already exists. So yes, illegal argument exception it is throwing and then yes, we actually handled the, here I'm writing one extra condition that handling the reflection attack, right? So remember, this is a very famous interview question also that how to prevent the reflection attack in your singleton class. I hope this is clear. Thank you so much.